Hi everybody, this is Kerry Troy. I'm going to teach you an exciting way to classify open channel flows and slopes in rectangular channels. So stay tuned. Okay, this method is, I call it the Trinity. I don't know if anyone else has done this, but this is kind of how I have come to think about open channel flow. Okay, so Trinity needs three parts, right? Um, so here you have your triangle and we're thinking about open channel flow, okay? So for this open channel flow, we're gonna think about fixing the flow rate, fixing the flow width. We're gonna have a rectangular channel. Uh, we're also gonna think about the slope and the roughness is being fixed as well. And then what we're gonna to try to do is to think about how we can classify the, the slope and the flow, okay? And so a trinity has three parts, right? Or, or did I say trinity? Yeah, trinity. Okay, so the first part of the trinity is the actual flow depth, okay? So the actual flow depth is, um, it is what it is. Okay, so that's one of my least favorite expressions. It is what it is. People always say that like it, 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 it means so much more than that is, but it is what it is. The, op the open channel flow uh, depth at any location will be what it will be. There, that's much better. Um, okay, so that's one part of the trinity. Okay, so now uh, let's think about some other stuff. Okay, so the other, Another depth that we can think about is the uniform flow depth or the normal flow depth. That's why it has a subscript N, okay? So the uniform flow depth uh, is given by Manning's equation, right? And the idea with uniform flow is that it's this perfect nirvana where the flow is exactly in balance between gravity and friction, okay? It's kind of like terminal velocity for the flow and it's the state that the flow would like to be in if the channel was long enough and uh, it could actually reach this equilibrium, okay? However, it can rarely reach the equilibrium, okay? So think about the uniform flow depth as a benchmark, right? So it's it's not necessarily what the depth actually is. So I'm gonna write it in over here as just some, some arbitrary number. It comes out of Manning's equation if you solve it in reverse. Um, and in general, it's not equal to the actual flow depth, okay? So which brings us to our first comparison. So. If we compare the actual flow depth with the uniform flow depth, so sort of doing a comparison along this side of the trinity or the triangle, um, we can classify the flow according to how it varies in space. And by space, I'm talking about uh, the dimension into the board. Uh, so X is the dimension as the flow is moving downstream and whether or not it's uniform or not will dictate whether or not the flow is going to be varying in the downstream, distance, in, in downstream dimension, essentially heading towards or away from that uniform flow depth, okay? So again, if the, if the actual flow depth is equal to the uniform flow depth, then we have uniform flow. And this is a common assumption for engineering design where we use Manning's equation, which holds for un uniform flow, and we do our designs that way, okay? If not, though, the more general case is that it's not uniform, okay? So if they're not equal, it's non-uniform flow, okay? So that means that the flow is varying with distance downstream. That will be the consequence. And there are two avenues for this sort of flow, or two classifications, subclassifications, if you will. Um, the first one is what we call gradually varied flow. So gradually varied flow is where the flow is slowly varying as it moves down the channel. Uh, and that's the norm for most rivers, rivers like the Wabash River here in Indiana. Um, the other option for how the flow depth might vary with distance downstream is rapidly, right? So a good example of that is the hydraulic jump, where the flow will jump from supercritical to subcritical over a very short distance, okay? So all of these spatial comparisons arise by comparing the uniform flow depth with the actual flow depth, okay? All right, so Trinity has three parts, and what is the third part? Well, the third part, the third depth, if you will, is the critical flow depth, okay? So the critical flow depth is the third axis. And uh, we can calculate the critical flow depth in a rectangular channel using our usual equation, the cube root of little q squared over g. Uh, and that is also, think of that as a benchmark depth. The flow is not at the critical depth, it's a benchmark, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and draw it in down in our diagram over here is, is up here. And I guess we'll work along this axis first for comparisons, okay? so. If I compare the actual flow depth to the critical flow depth, I'm able to tell whether the flow is super or subcritical, okay? So down here on this diagram, we have the actual flow depth over here. It's less than what I've drawn in is the critical depth, 
and therefore the flow would be super subcritical. What do you think? I'll just give you a chance here. Super critical, that's right. So relative to the critical depth, we have a shallow flow. Shallow flows are fast for a given flow rate, and that would be a super critical flow. And conversely, if the actual flow depth was greater than this benchmark critical depth, we'd have subcritical flow, okay? So if you compare along this axis of the trinity, you get your Froude number uh, classifications, okay? And those are what we just said, subcritical or supercritical, and the Froude number is less than or greater than one. All right, so the last axis to compare along for flow classification is to compare these two benchmark depths. And remember that the flow is rarely at either of these steps, but just by calculating them and comparing them for a given flow in a given channel tells you some information about the flow in the channel. Okay, so I'm gonna just switch to a new slide here. So if we compare the uniform flow depth and the critical flow depth, the classification that we're able to do is the slope classification, okay? So we have two cases. The first case is where the uniform flow depth is greater than the critical flow depth. And again, the actual flow depth is something that's a third part, and that will be what it will be. Um, so if the uniform flow depth is greater than the critical depth, then we call that a mild slope. And the way that I remember that is that um, you, the normal depth is subcritical, so uh, flow is normally subcritical, okay? And subcritical is a mild state, right? It's, it's uh, the milder of the two. In contrast, if you have a steep slope, you have the normal depth less than the critical depth. Uh, and in that case, I like to think about that as flow is normally supercritical, even though it's rarely normal. Um, so those are the two ways that we can classify that just by comparing these two benchmark depths. Okay, and again, the third depth, the actual depth, will be anywhere uh, between or uh, outside of those, okay? One mind-blowing thing you can think about, uh, maybe when you have a quiet moment and a cup of coffee, is that um, you could have the same exact channel and actually, if you vary the flow rate, um, it could be a steep channel for one flow rate and a mild channel for another flow rate, okay? So I guess what I'm saying is both of these uh, benchmark depths depend on the flow rate, okay? So if you change the flow rate, not only will you bump these critical and normal depths up or down, but they could actually uh, toggle on one another and you could change the, the, the slope classification of the channel, okay? So that's kind of a cool thing to think about, okay? All right, back to our almost complete uh, trinity of classification. So this is the trinity here. The one last thing that we didn't talk at all about, which is kind of implicit in everything we're doing here, is... Um, Everything with the trinity is related to how the flow is varying in space, either uh, in the vertical direction or in the downstream direction, right? And on top of that, you have these temporal classifications which tell us whether the flow is changing in time or not changing in time. Generally, uh, especially in an introductory level for open channel flow, everything is steady, nothing is changing in time, and we just focus on trying to understand how things are changing in space, okay? And there you have it, the Trinity of Open Channel Flow. I hope it's helpful to you. Have a good day.